Hello. Um, today, because we haven't done a little video for a while, I'm going to show you how to make these pots like this. Um, so basically, I'm using a mixture of sodium silicate and slip, which is the same slip as the clay, but you can use a different colour um, if you want to. It's basically just mixed up like that in a tub. I've got a nice big paintbrush there to brush it on with. But first, I've got about 800, 900 grams of clay. I'm just going to centre it as usual. So that's it pretty much centered. Um, pop a hole in the in the middle. So slowly down with your finger. I'm using my thumb today as well because I seem to have a weak finger today for some reason. I'm not gonna go as deep as I would normally because I want to put a bit of a foot ring on these. So I'm leaving about, I don't know, maybe a centimetre and a half on the bottom there. Centimetre or so smooth the base out, nice and flat, no lumps and bumps, and then as always I push it into the centre if I'm making a sort of a cylinder shape, um, I'm going to start pulling the walls up, it is really soft today, so that's fine. Pull the walls up. Notice how I'm supporting my fingers as I'm pulling up the side of the wall. So I'm supporting with my thumbs attached to both hands. So that's a really tight um, like hold. If I was doing it like this, I would be all over the place. So I've got to keep it really tight together. I took my elbows in, rest on me knee if I can. And that gives you a really good hold on the clay. So I'm going to leave it a little bit thicker in the middle, up to about there. And then I'm going to thin it out a little bit more and just start to put the shape in for the, the neck on the pot. I can still fiddle on with it later on, so I'm not that bothered about what it looks like. Get the water out the bottom. And then use uh, a tool to get the, the slip off the outside, but only where I'm going to put the sodium silicate. I'm not bothered about the rest of it, but I want this bit as dry as I can possibly get it. So I'm just taking all that excess slip and watery slip off. So dump your hands, rinse them out a little bit, clean them off, dry them on the towel because I'm going to get my heat gun. You can also use a blowtorch, either a big one or a little one, um, but at the minute I'm using this. So I'm just going to hold it, spin the wheel slowly, put this on and just start drying it out. I don't want to dry it out too much, but I want it dry enough so that the, the slip that I'm going to put on actually sticks to it and I can get a decent layer on. So I've dried the outside of the pot a little bit, I'm going to get my brush loaded up with the slip and sodium silicate mixture. There's loads of videos on YouTube and stuff for this if you want to have a look at how other people do it as well. Um, there is a few different ways, but this is just how I'm doing it for these particular pots. So load it right up, spin the wheel slowly and just try and get a good thickness on there doesn't matter if it's not massively even I quite kind of like it where it's thick and thin so that's all I'm going to put on there I'm going to dry it out again um, because really I need all of this slip to be tight 
like a skin on the outside so when I belly it out it starts to crack so I've um I've dried it a little bit with a hairdryer with the um, heat gun there I'm now going to belly it out with my throwing stick so I'll support it really well because I don't want it to catch on the inside of the pot and just start bellying from the bottom so I want a nice rounded shape Stop the wheel, have a little look at it, see what sort of shape it is. It's not too bad. So on these I need um, quite wide-ish openings because I'm making these for our obvara and um, horsehair workshops. So it's going to be probably a lot of beginners, people who've never done it before. Um, and when you're putting stuff in and out of really cold liquid and water when it's about well maybe about 500 degrees ish um, it doesn't like it very much so the more I can get the whole pot in the water really quickly the more evenly it'll cool down if I just cool down the outside there's a tiny little hole at the top um, it ends up half the time cracking or going up into your face because there's a load of steam comes out of it if there's water gets in there um, it acts like a sort of a jet so yeah so I'm trying to do purposefully big um, wide openings at the top and I'm also doing smaller cracks as well so that gives it less of a chance of cracking that way um, but you can mess about with this you can make the slip thicker you can cut into it and then um, belly it out you can use a different coloured slip there's kind of all sorts you can do you can try it with different wetnesses and drynesses um, but yeah so that's pretty much it all I'll do now is I'll just get this tool on the top and just sort of shape that neck a little bit more use me leather to round off that rim and tidy it up really nicely um, if there's any water left in get that out as a tiny bit there and then I'm going to trim as much as I can off the bottom here I will trim it again tomorrow or the day after but just to get most of the thickness off and I want a nice tall foot ring on there So the width of this is perfect, like that, that depth there. And then as I say, I'll trim it off tomorrow and tidy it up. And then basically just wire it off the bat, but I'm actually gonna leave it on the bat to dry a little bit because it's too soggy to pick up so take your bat out pop it down on the board and then that's it pretty much done